I'm back home. And by that, I don't necessarily mean back on the Hermitcraft server, although this place is essentially my second home. No, I've just returned from a little road trip in my VW bus. It was a lot of fun. It was very cool just popping around England and things. It was one of the first trips out that I've done since really the beginning of COVID-19 because obviously, you know, all holidays and everything like that got shut down. And it was nice to have a few days away, but it's also nice to be back on the Hermitcraft server and back working on projects and things. Now, for anyone who watched the previous episode of Hermitcraft, you may recognize these two arches right here. You see, I was planning on building up my storage system, and then I essentially just spent the whole day doing goofy stuff with this gal, and we essentially gave up on the entire storage system idea. So I suppose I should probably work on that in today's Hermitcraft episode. And I have to say, I do quite like where it's going. I think we can work with this, and I think we could end up with something pretty cool. Obviously, this is just the beginning. We have got a lot of work to do today. First things first, I should probably get the other archway templates in place so I can get a feel for how we're actually going to start building up around these things. I'm going to be honest, now that they're all in place, it does look really, really cool. It looks incredibly impressive and grand, but I have to say I'm a little bit nervous because I'm not entirely sure still what my plan is. I thought once I'd built these... It would all just come to my head, I would envision it, and then we could start constructing, but no, that has not happened, and that has me scared. What have we got up here? So we've got, we've got this. This looks really cool. I love these slanting stone block walls. I think they look really good, so we're definitely going to have those, those diagonals in the corners. And I really love the basalt, and I love the black stone as well, so that's all stuff that's going to carry through. I gotta say, I'm still I'm still nervous. I think I'm just gonna start throwing blocks around, and I'm gonna see what happens. If it's horrible, I apologize. I really do wish there was an easier way to get black stone. I mean, I get it, you know, basalt, that's easy to come by. We've got the basalt generator, everything's good there, but black stone is dangerous. That was some pretty pro skills there, wasn't it? That was some pretty pro skills. And that definitely wasn't pro skills. This was not pro skills at all. Things are beginning to take shape. So I've done a little bit of redesigning of the archways. Instead of having a full arch, I now have a half arch. So the arch goes up like this, it runs across there, we've got the gap in the center which is going to be filled with basalt, and then it runs directly into this central diamond shape, which is made out of the black stone, kind of mirroring what we have up at the top here, and I think this looks gorgeous. Black stone is definitely the best block in the game, even if it's really difficult to get a hold of. And now that I actually have the basalt in place, it feels a lot more solid. The thing that I'm a little bit concerned about is this area right here. I'm thinking... I actually keep this bit a little bit more squared off so we continue the ceiling to be flat and then also have a flat edge here and then do something there. I don't know, I'm going to work on this area first. As you can probably tell, my confidence in building has dropped off a little bit over the past couple of days, but I'm going to brute force through it. I'm a little bit embarrassed. For the second time in this Hermitcraft season, I've forgotten I'm incredibly rich, and I can just buy things. Why would I gather Blackstone when I can get someone else to gather Blackstone for me, and then I just pay them for it? I also can't help but notice that Basalt is one diamond per stack. I mean, I have like four double chests of the stuff, thanks to my generator. Maybe I should get into business. Which reminds me, I really need to actually fill up all of the shulker boxes and things in my Odeer store. Because currently, that's just a bunch of redstone contraptions in a blue and yellow shop. And I need to place all the melons and pumpkins in my farm. I need to do all of the storage system redstone. And I need to do the redstone for the heart of the base. If it wasn't already quite obvious, I seem to be starting a lot of projects without quite finishing the previous project. Yeah, we've got a lot of work to do on the Hermitcraft server. But let's not get distracted by those and leave another unfinished project because that would be incredibly counterintuitive. I think I've come up with a plan for the roof. Extend this across, flat, flat, beautiful. As you can tell, it's an incredibly detailed plan, but it's working well. You can see we've got the wall in place, we've got the ceiling in place, everything's looking good in that department. Obviously, this is all just scaffolding stuff, so ignore this. I'm not doing some strange modern art installation in my storage system, but I'm, I'm kind of stressing here because I don't know what to do with this basalt. This basalt right here. I don't know... I mean, I do like it running in this direction, but then that doesn't work for any of the other quadrants. So I'm thinking maybe flip it on its head and have it as like a decorative thing. That could look quite cool. Whoa! Oh, that's not good! Oh, that is not good. Because he has blown up all my chests. Also, where I've come through in the nether really isn't ideal. Like, this totally is not ideal at all. This also isn't ideal. We don't have... A pass for the road, and also someone's renamed our store from being Oh Dear to being Oh Dear. I mean, that kind of is the name, but now it's extra specially pronounced. Just so you know, I, I died again. 
I managed to die again. I still haven't picked up my stuff. I don't think it could be much worse than it is. <laughs> that creeper nailed all of my chests. <laughs> I'm stressing. <laughs> I'm really, really stressing. Well, after an incredibly frantic few minutes, I've managed to get all of my stuff just chucked into those chests there. It's just a disorganized mess at this point in time. And I managed to get all of my gear back, which is nice because that would have been upsetting. And I've managed to finish up the slice of the room. So we have got one little part of the room done, and I have to say, it is looking really, really cool. I'm loving the vibe, I'm loving the way that it feels, so let's build it in the other spots too. And you know what? I've done enough talking. Let's crack on with the third-person time-lapse. And in that third-person time-lapse, I'm going to do more talking. You know, I, I talk a lot. In fact, I have to be a little bit careful in life that I don't go into YouTube mode when talking with people, because obviously I can talk to myself all day long. I do talk to myself all day long. It's literally what I do for a living is talk to myself all day long. So when I'm having a conversation with someone, I have to make sure that I don't just talk to myself and keep myself very entertained, but also bore the other person to death. Anyway, in this time-lapse chat, I want to talk to you about modded Minecraft, because as you guys know, you know, I've been having a lot of fun with movable tile entities, things like movable chests, movable droppers, movable hoppers, and things like that. And recently, I've played around with auto-crafting as well. And I have to say, you know, as far as new features are concerned, I am 100% all for movable tile entities. I think it should exist. It exists in Bedrock Edition. I don't fully understand why it doesn't exist in Java Edition. I am 100% all for it. But also, I never thought I'd say this, I'm all for auto-crafting. For anyone who didn't see my video of auto-crafting, if it's implemented in the same way that that modification implements it, it is not overpowered. In fact, it's substantially underpowered. It's so difficult to auto-craft anything other than the simplest of blocks. It's, it's just a fun game mechanic that totally doesn't break how Minecraft feels as a vanilla experience. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. I'm really curious and I honestly, I cannot wait to see what comes in Minecraft 1.17. I, I don't even know what to expect but redstone stuff would be nice. Anyway, all redstone stuff aside, let's take a look at this brand new build. And I'm gonna be totally honest, okay, given the fact that I didn't really have much of a detailed plan, I am really impressed with how this has come together. It looks so, so cool. It looks seriously, seriously cool and well put together and just solid, it looks, it looks wicked. It looks seriously good. I'm chuffed to miss with that. Obviously, there's still there's still a bunch of stuff that needs to be done. We need to do the floor and everything like that. But this is this is an awesome start. This is a seriously awesome start. Now, before we move on, there's something that I really, really want to check on. Okay, it's looking. I mean, the chair is still there, and I can see a hole in the bottom, and it looks like there's been some fences erected by Green, which is, I guess, that's that's promising. And. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a couple chickens down here. Are these the only ones left? Give a present to a scout, give a present to Mumbo. Are there no others? Are there really no others? Has he completed all the challenges or have they mysteriously died? I'm honestly confused. Oh, there's a few. There's a few in there. In fact, there's a bunch just in there with the villagers. Build, ugly build, pretend it's not. Do a one minute dance montage. <laughs> Convince a hermit to buy rotten flesh. I mean that, that okay, so there's gonna be there's gonna be chickens located I guess just in little nooks and crannies throughout Green's base I'm excited to see what he does with it because I have not seen his episode yet I'm also a tiny 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 bit embarrassed by the fact that Green actually has He actually has a sorting system before I've got one. I never thought I would see that day happen How did those two get out there? Are those odd? Are those challenge chickens? Are those challenge chariots? Yeah, <laughs> it looks like they are this is- oh look, they're everywhere! Well, this is hilarious. I'm- I- Green's gonna be finding challenges for like the rest of the season. I'm sure there's even some in the redstone, there has to be. Uh, there's not. Um, I totally expected to find some, but there's not. Right, let's stop fanning out about. We've still got a bunch of work to do on our storage system in the base. Now it is time to work on the floor. We need to get the floor done, alright? And I'm thinking we are going to bring the outside in. Originally I was thinking of doing spruce wood and things like I've done on the layer above. But the more I think about it, the more I think it would be really nice to just have like a luscious meadow down here. Imagine that, we've just got a bunch of grass, a little bit of bone meal action, maybe a little bit of bamboo in areas that we don't walk around too much, maybe a little bit of water as well. I mean, all of this sounds very good. 
So I'm just going to start clearing out the space. Something like this. Okay, this is what we're going for. And it's also got me thinking, you know, if I fly down into this area here, I'm thinking... Maybe we even get rid of it. I mean, I never liked this, and this was always temporary, and I was going to do more with it, and then I just never bother. What? Free sample courtesy of Impulse SV. Has he given me a beacon? Is that a beacon? Have I been given a beacon? Has he given me a sample beacon? Do I get to keep this beacon? Beacons back in the stock. But do I have to give this back? This feels like it's an expensive thing for me to get. Well, I mean, unless you said otherwise, I'm going to keep it. Okay, and I, I really do appreciate that because currently this is my only beacon. I have one beacon that I move around. <laughs> I move this thing around the Hermitcraft server. Maybe I should get more. His advertising has 100% worked on me. I'm sold. Impulse has just confirmed that I get to keep a beacon that has 100% made my day. Really? Again? I can't believe a creeper's blown up the chests that I put in place because a creeper blew up my chests. This is this is ridiculous. I don't even know what to say. I'm, I'm totally composed. I don't know what you're talking about. This is fun. This is fun. This is fun. That definitely sounded like something from a horror film. Let's move on. This is a solid start, but obviously there's plenty of work to do. I've actually made it worse. <laughs> this is definitely worse, but you can see the green grass is incredibly green. So now we need to add a little bit more texture, which I have now done, and that has made a world of difference, like a literal world of difference. It is amazing how much just adding a few extra blocks in has affected this place, but obviously this is, once again, we're still on square one right now. We have to get our scar hat on. I need to make paths, I need to place in stone, I need to get my bone meal out, I need to get my bamboo out, I need to get my string out, and it's a, it's a big old process. Making grass look good, you know? But my grass is beginning to look good. You know, it's funny. If in real life my lawn looked like this, I would literally vomit and freak out. Whereas in Minecraft, I want it to look like this. And now I've made it even worse. I've added in this yellow stained grass here. I mean, like, like these look like dead spots in the grass. In real life, absolutely would cry. You know, I'd be so upset. But in Minecraft, these are good. I like the dead spots. Everything looks good. And to be honest, I don't actually think I'm going to do too much more. Because this space is a little bit confined, I don't want to start adding in big stone structures and stuff like that. And it's also quite a grey room. I actually think for the time being, I'm going to stick with it looking very, very green. Yeah. I mean, I, does this mean the storage system is done? I mean, I know that we've got these chests right here. They're going to stay until I actually work out where the items go. But the actual build is done. So now I have to do the incredibly, incredibly, incredibly dull task of working out where the items are going to go. You know, I mentioned it in the previous clip and it kind of fired up in my brain that I probably should do that. I need to take it off my list. I've been putting it off for a long time because it's depressingly boring. Uh, right, let's go through to the redstone testing world and start mapping things out. But first, I'm going to put it off some more. I'm going to bed. <laughs> I don't want to do it tonight. Now that I've definitely put it off for long enough, Let's get to work on this thing. Since when has there been this much wood stuff? I mean, I'm generally getting a little bit concerned now that even though I've got 225 slots for items, my storage system isn't going to be big enough. And that's totally ridiculous. I remember the days when Minecraft literally consisted of around about 14 items. You know, you had a wooden blank, you had some cobblestone, you couldn't get smooth stone, you had just dirt, you couldn't get grass. You know, it's simpler times. One third of the storage system is now all in place, and for the most part, it's all wood related. And I've got to say, now that I'm doing this, I'm actually finding it incredibly satisfying. Like, this is... I'm having a lot of fun just rooting through this area here, looking for things that match up, finding categories and things. It's, it's oddly satisfying. Why did I put this off for so long? I'm having a really good time. With that being said, I feel like I should go for a bit of a rethink. Because looking at this, trying to sort every single item, even items that I'm not going to use, just doesn't make much sense. Like, I can't see myself using any of the birch stuff. I can't really see myself using any acacia stuff or any of the nether woods at all in any of my builds, so what's the point of me having them in my storage system? Yeah, I'm gonna clear all of that stuff out. One hour later, yes, you heard that correct, one hour. I have finally got myself sorted with a fully organized first third, and I'm feeling really, really good about it. I've put a lot of thought into it. Another hour later, the second third is all done, so I've got all of my redstone components and things. I then have all of my stone bits and pieces, and then we move on into the nether section as well. So this really is, this is extensive. This is covering a lot of different areas here. And finally, one more hour later, the whole thing has been fully designed. And I have to say, I actually didn't have enough space. 
I really didn't. I wish I had a lot more space than this because there are a handful of items that I wish I could have added in, but I've had to leave out. But I've got all my precious stuff. I've got a few farm bits and pieces. And then we move into the various colors section with the concrete and the wool and all the different dyes and things. There's just so many items in Minecraft these days. There's so many items in Minecraft. But I think I've got everything covered. I've got a few useful bits at the end of here. I've kind of swapped out this zone as well. I mean, it all looks good. It all looks good. I'm looking forward to getting it installed on the Hermitcraft server. But I think I'm going to do that in a live stream because this sort of project is incredibly dull and boring in an episode. Whereas if I do it in a live stream, it's going to be incredibly dull and boring, but you're all going to be sat there watching with me. You're going to be keeping me company, so hopefully it'll be less dull and boring. Right, let's pop back onto the Hermitcraft server and crack on with something else. A couple of weeks ago, I built up the most ridiculous automatic melon and pumpkin farm I possibly could on the Hermitcraft server. And from there, I didn't actually fill it up with melons and pumpkins, so we should probably do that. I think there's also a little bit of redstone left to do. I honestly can't remember. It feels like months since I've been over there. We need to check this thing out. Okay, the first job that we need to do is I need to get all of the stone slabs and all of the water in place because currently this is just some strips of land with absolutely no life growing on it. Oh dear, this is something that I did not think about. The fact that this does not create infinite water streams. That... Ah, uh, there's got to be a creative way in which we can work around this. It definitely isn't the fastest method in the world, but it's faster than anything else I could come up with. So I've got a little refilling station right here, and I just refill all of my water buckets, and then I make my way down the line, gradually increasing eight blocks at a time. I think this is... 250 blocks long and we've got two strips. This is gonna take a while. So you know what that means? It's a tiny 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 time lapse 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 and it actually didn't take that long So now next phase is farmland and then I guess melons and pumpkins and then We're all complete and I must admit I'm a little bit terrified of actually activating this thing simply because I am scared for the amount of items that are going to flow through this system here. It is going to be a lot. Making a diamond hoe because I'm rich. The actual creation of the farmland is really quite satisfying. But the thing that isn't satisfying is the fact that whenever I get even remotely close to the dirt. I start bobbing up and down like that. Why is that a thing? If you're in water on a slab, you just jump automatically. That's just... Oh, it makes my blood boil. Thankfully, it's all over. We now have an area complete with farmland. So let's grab ourselves a whole ton of pumpkin seeds and melon seeds and just go to business. I want to get this farm done and dusted by the end of today's episode. Now, the secret to this farm being so incredibly efficient is the fact that you alternate the melons and the pumpkins. Because that means if a melon grows in, say, for example, this spot right here... The stalks that are around it don't actually attach to it because, of course, they belong to pumpkins or whatever. So that means that they can then grow a pumpkin in a different spot. I'm not sure if that made sense. I think that made sense. Hopefully that made sense. If I didn't, I'm sorry. I've been playing a lot of Minecraft today and I begin to not make sense. All of the melons, all of the pumpkin seeds are now all in place. This is looking like a legitimate farm. I mean, is there actually anything else left to do? So we have, do we have the item pickup systems? Yes, yeah, we've got, we've got a lot of mobs. We've got a lot of mobs. How did they not blow up? Oh, well, that skeleton just shot one of the creepers and it blew up, but that's fine. That's fine. That's not a problem. At least that wasn't my fault. And there we go. Oh, look, our farm is beginning to produce things. We are getting melons and pumpkins sprouting up through this thing. And that is an incredibly good feeling. This is good. This is really, really good. I am very excited for the first test of this thing because honestly, I'm curious to see how our item filters and just how the items are dealt with. <laughs> There's going to be so many items flowing out of this thing. So let's see. Three, two, one, go. Oh, yeah, I probably should put some form of border on the edge of this thing because as you were going to see... In a couple of seconds, yeah, there are going to be items exploding out the side of this thing. Although they seem to be fairly contained, other than those. Do you know what's incredibly embarrassing? I didn't actually check how many melons and pumpkins had grown in the farm. It wasn't many. It was... <laughs> there was barely any. So the minecarts came back, and before I could even <laughs> record a clip, all of the items had come out of the minecarts. I tell you what though, it's probably for the better because the part of the storage system that all the melons and pumpkins are running into is actually filled. 
there's no slots for it, so all of them were just pouring out onto the floor. And if that entire farm had harvested, creating thousands upon thousands of entities, that could have been an issue. We definitely don't want a repeat of Hermitcraft Season 5, do we? Modifications have been made, and now I think we're ready for another harvest. The farm definitely isn't at max capacity, but that seems more than enough for a quick stress test. So let's give this thing a whirl, and this will never not be fun to watch. It looks especially cool from up here, and also we are beginning to get the first lot of melons and pumpkins flowing through the system and everything is being picked up. The first lot is tiny, by the way, because the minecarts get sent off kind of before the flying machines have actually broken any melons and pumpkins, so you only get a few items picked up. This second batch is a lot more impressive though, and the volume is much higher, and you can see that we are... How many hoppers are required? So we need two hoppers for pumpkins and four for melons. So with all that working, that now means that this farm is fully completed. This thing is ready to just be used for long periods of time gather up tons upon tons of melons and pumpkins and if you're wondering why I need so many it's simply because I want to do villager trading and these these are great to trade with villagers so we've completed this we've also completed our storage system and we've also planned out where the items are going to go in the storage system so we've completed a lot of tasks in today's Hermitcraft episode it's been a really fun one I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one I'll, I'll see you later can you see my face all right, yeah, I'll, I'll see you later. I honestly still can't get over how long it took me to plan out where all of the items go in the storage system. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, three hours on a Minecraft project, that's no big deal for me these days. You know, I spend that, well, I spend that all the time, okay? But three hours just putting item frames and putting items in item frames? I mean, that's crazy. That's genuinely crazy.